If you've worked with the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator, the pen tool in Photoshop works pretty much the same way. If you haven't used the pen tool yet, this lesson will teach you how to work with it in a nice, efficient way. You'll select the pen tool here at the middle lower part of your tools panel. And before you begin, I just want to show you that there's some flyout options here. There's the regular pen tool, there's the freeform pen tool. You can add and delete anchor points as well as convert anchor points. We'll talk about those in just a second. And then, before you start drawing, you'll need to decide whether or not to choose paths, shapes, or pixels. When you're working with a path, what you're really doing is you're creating a shape, or line, a path, that you can do something to. For instance, you could put text on a path, or you could mask away an area with a path, or clean up a path, or make a selection with a path. There's a lot of different things that you could do. So we'll start there. Now, if your cursor shows this crosshair, it's probably because you have caps lock turned on. So if you turn caps lock off, you will see the pen cursor. And then all you need to do is click once to set down an anchor point, and then click again to create the path between the two anchor points. And that's pretty much, in a nutshell, the concept of working with a pen. Paths are drawn between any two anchor points. And working with straight lines is super easy. So all you have to do is click and the path gets drawn after you click between the previous and the current anchor point. And you could just click and 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 click to your heart's content. And the path does not have a stroke or a fill, it's just the line itself. You can create open paths as well as closed paths. So right now this is an open path. If I wanted to close it, I would just put my cursor on top of the opening anchor point, and when that little circle appears, click once to close the shape. So again, clicking anywhere as many times as you like, even overlapping, although typically probably you would trace around the outside of an object with your pen tool. And when you want to close the shape, put your cursor on top of the opening anchor point and click once and a straight line is drawn from your last anchor point to your first one to create the closed shape. So that is very different than this next feature, which is working with shapes. Now I want to undo all of those paths because I really don't need them. So let's just go here. And uh, working with shapes creates vector shapes. So this will give you a stroke and a fill. So let's change the foreground color to something that we can see easily. So now while we're drawing, we're filling in the path with a solid color. Now this is still an open shape even though it's filling it in, it's still an open shape. So I'd probably want to close the shape just to keep a closed path within my shape. And while you're working with shapes, you can add to the selection. You can combine shapes. So this is every time I click and click, I would create a new layer. So if I do this, now I'm creating a new shape layer. Whereas if I click on the second option, I would be combining shapes on a single layer. The third option is to subtract from a shape like so, and so forth. We've got intersecting shape areas like this. And then the last one is excluding overlapping shapes. And then this last, last one, it's often its own category, is to merge the shape components into a single object or shape on individual layer. You can change the color of your fill at any time just select the layer that you want to modify and then go and choose the new color. If you had a stroke on your object, you can increase or decrease the size of the stroke as well as the color of the stroke. So you're not stuck with whatever you started with. So these are vector shapes drawn with the pen tool. Here also you can specify the line on your selected object. So you can have a solid line, a dashed line, a dotted line, and you can also create custom lines or probably with this drop down arrow copy strokes and paste them. So if I really liked the stroke on this one, I could copy it and then select your other object and paste it like so. Now that blue was the same color, so I probably would have to select a different one and then come back and change it and it will go back to my color of the stroke up here, but it's still copying that dotted line. In addition, you can modify where the stroke falls, whether it's right on the path, on the inside of the path, right on the path, and then on the outside of the path. And that's a really nice, cool feature, which will help you with creating your shapes. 
You could also adjust, like in Illustrator, the caps of your lines. Let's go back to a straight line. Actually, let's do straight line uh, here, like so. And then we can play around with the caps. We'll make it a straight line. The caps are the elbows of your line shapes. So you can go from a blunt line to a curved corner to a extended cap. And it really depends on your shape. We're not really seeing any change occurring here. And there's also corners. You can change the corners of your different shapes. And again, it's not working here, but this may work with some other options while you're working. This is the dimensions of your object. And then if you wanted to, you could align your selected shape to another object or a selected layer or align it to the canvas. Here is how you can adjust the stacking order of your individual shapes from forward to backwards. And then this button will give you what's called the rubber band. With the rubber band, when you're drawing, you get this rubber band option that shows you where the path will go before you set down the next anchor point. Some people love this tool, other people can't stand it. So it's really up to you whether or not you want to work with it. I learned without the rubber band, and so to see it, to me, is distracting. But you may find that it's a good way of learning how to work with the pen tool, so I'll let you decide whether or not you want to turn it on and off. And aligning edges is a feature that you can turn on and off, and that will tell you whether or not you're aligning the edges of your lines while you're working. Clicking and clicking and clicking. Now, let's go back to the move arrow so we can release that path. Now that's straight lines, and it's a totally different story when you're working with curvy lines. So I've created this diagram here that will instruct you on working with curvy lines, or what we call Bezier curves. With a curved line, you're still dealing with anchor points and the paths that are drawn between any two anchor points. However, you also have what are called direction handles, which will steer, almost like a steering bar of your bicycle, steer the curvature of an individual path. So looking at this layer, I've created little red lines that will show you the different parts of this diagram. And I'll explain what everything is, and then I'll show you how to create a line. So the first thing is an unselected anchor point. Unselected anchor points are hollow, as opposed to selected anchor points, which are solid. A line segment is what is drawn between any two points. And then a selected anchor point, like I said, was solid. You have direction handles, which are the steering bars that direct the line's curvature. And then there's also the direction handles left and right side. And then the direction points are at the very ends of your direction handles. And the points can be dragged out or dragged in toward the anchor point and the length of them will determine the arc height. And you can also wiggle the whole direction handles, which will determine the angle of the curve. So let's grab our pen tool now. And in this case, we just want to deal with paths. And what you'll do is you'll click on the anchor point and drag upwards. So clicking once and dragging upwards. And what this does is it drags out those direction handles from the anchor point. There's no lines being drawn here, no points of ink or anything being drawn here. It's just a starting point and the direction handles. If you want to make sure that your direction handles constrain to a 45 or 90 degree angle, hold down your shift key while you're dragging and then release. So right now we just have the beginning anchor point and now we're going to draw the path. Now it looks like I left the rubber band on. But what we, we were doing was dragging in the direction that we want our curve to go. So you can see that this curve is arcing up and over. And then what we would need to do is set down the next anchor point and drag in the direction we want our next curve to go in. So I'm going to click here on the diagram and hold my Shift key down to constrain and then drag downwards and release. So now I have two anchor points and the curve drawn between them and now I haven't drawn my next line yet because I need to set down the next anchor point. The direction handles deal with half of each line segment, the one before and the one after. So this first direction handle deals with this half of the curve, but this other direction handle that I haven't set down the anchor point for deals with this half of the curve. So I need to click and drag upwards in order to get that curve to go in the direction that I want it to go. If that all makes sense. I'm going to turn the rubber band off for this next demo. 
and just show you how to draw without the diagram. So again, you're going to be clicking. Oops, we have to release the line. In order to release the line, what you'll do is you'll hold down your Command or Control key and click once to click away from the selected line shape, and then you'll go back to your pen tool. So again, you'll click and drag upwards, hold down your Shift key and release, and I'm just going to try to eyeball it. Clicking and dragging downwards, holding my Shift key to constrain, clicking and dragging upwards, and I can continue on in this fashion to make a nice scalloped edge, like so. Now if you wanted to go from a line to a curve or a curve to a line, and let's release this path, you'll need to do a little fancy footwork by converting the anchor point, because an anchor point can support curves or lines. So if I wanted to create a straight line, I click once and then click again, but if I now need a curvy line, I'll actually have to drag upwards. But if I start dragging before I release my mouse, I'll get a curved line. So I have to actually click once and then hold down the Alt or Option key to drag out a direction handle in the direction that I want to move in. Then I can click and drag downwards to create the curve. Now if I want to go from a curve to a line, I do the opposite. So I'm going to release that path and this time I'm going to click and drag up to create the curve, click and drag down to create the curve, but now I need a direction handle going in a straight line. So I have to get rid of this direction handle. I can drag it to the anchor point or I can click right on the anchor point holding down my Alt or Option key to remove it and then clicking once gives me a straight line. Working with the pen tool requires a little bit of practice but once you get the general idea of how it works you can have a lot of freedom and control over working with it when you're making selections or drawing paths or shapes. We're going to shift over now to working with the pen tool and type or text on a path because you can put type on a path whether it's a line that you draw with a pen tool or a circle shape that you create. So if I wanted to put some type on a path like this, what I'll do is make sure the path is selected and I'll click and drag in the direction that I want my curve to go in and then click over here and drag in the opposite direction so I can get that arc sort of mirroring the edge of the plate and release. To add type on a path, grab your type tool and you put your cursor here and when you see your cursor change into what I call the surfboard, you could click and start typing. Now I'd like to change my font before because it's 170 points and that's way too huge. So I'm going to change it to a different font face actually while I'm here. Let's do Broadway and then we'll change the font size down to 28 points. We'll leave it at sharp and let's just do um, black for the color. And now putting my surfboard right there on top of the line, I'm going to click once and just start typing. Now we're not seeing all of my type because one thing that this type tool does is it creates these opening and closing markers that will determine how far your type flows along the path that you've drawn. But it's easy to expand the path if you use the black arrow underneath your type tool. It's called the path selection tool. You'll select it and once it's selected what you can do is click on the type layer and then open it up by clicking on the marker and dragging open like so. Now it looks like this font is still a little bit too large, so you can select all of the type on a single layer by double clicking it, and then you can make some modifications to the type with your up, down arrows. So that's what I wanted it to say, burgers, shakes, dogs, and fries. Now underneath the black arrow is another tool called the direct selection tool. It's a white arrow which will reactivate your path which means that you could modify the path. If I wanted to bring the B a little bit closer, but then arc the text out a little bit more, I can make fine-tune adjustments to the path after the fact. So the type is still live and can be edited at any time. And you can also do multiple undos while you're working. So I'm just going to arc this up a little bit more, like so. And when you're finished, just click away to release. The type is still editable at any time, as is the path. You could go back in and change the font face, the font size, the font color, as well as the path.
Now the last thing that I wanted to show you working with paths deals with something that I mentioned in an earlier lesson, which is clipping paths. Now you don't really have this issue so much in the current version of Adobe InDesign, but in older versions of Quark, and sometimes there may be certain circumstances where someone tells you you need to clip a shape, where you need to separate an object from its background, and you can't necessarily bring the object in with transparency, so you'll have to clip away the background area so that when you bring it into the page layout program, the background color is clipped away and you only have the shape. So what I've done with this picture of an elephant is I already extracted the elephant from its background so that I could quickly come in here and create a selection from it. And then I'm going to go into my paths panel and I'm going to create a path with this selection. There is a button here at the bottom that you can click on to create what's called a work path. A work path is a temporary path that is associated with this Photoshop file and unless or until you create a new work path, this guy will stay there. To protect my work, one thing I always do is double click on it and give it a name. Because I don't want to lose it in case I accidentally do make another path, I'd like to keep this one. Now, a regular work path is not a clipping path. A clipping path is what you need to bring it into a page layout program. A work path is just another way of making a selection of a previously selected object. So to convert this into a clipping path, you'll select the layer and click on the options menu and choose clipping path. Here in the Clipping Path dialog box is the name of the path that you just gave your work path. And then the flatness is something that you can just leave for the device pixels. You don't even have to put anything in there. And then click OK. So now we have a saved clipping path as part of this document. To bring the image into a page layout program, you're going to want to save it as an EPS for Quark, or you could save it as a PSD for InDesign. I'll show you the EPS. So you just do Save As and then give it an EPS file format here. I'll just leave it with this long file name and save. Don't worry about any of these options unless a printer or your customer tells you you need to change any of these. You don't need to select them and click OK. Then I'm going to switch over to my Illustrator file and show you because Illustrator is another program that you could use for page layout besides InDesign. You would place your saved file There's my saved image. And then all you have to do is put it into position, like so. So now it's clipped away the background areas of that document, which had a different background color. And it's just showing us this image. And the image itself is a placed file, which means that I could resize it and do anything that I wanted with it while I'm working. You know, maybe I want to have the type on top, so I could select the type and arrange that, bring it to front, shift it down, and otherwise uh, play around. So let's go back to Photoshop for a second and remind you what we've done. We've created clipping paths from our paths. We've worked with type on a path using the pen tool. We've talked about how to create curves and straight lines with the pen tool, as well as working with straight lines. And the other thing that I didn't show you, the last thing I'll show you is the freeform pen tool which allows you to draw with the pen tool as you would a regular pen or pencil. In this case, it's filling in with a stroke and a fill. Working with the freeform pen tool might be a really fun way for you to draw these vector lines and shapes and paths, especially if you had a stylus with a tablet while you're working in Photoshop.